My name's Janine Driver. I'm the celebrity lie detector. I'm so excited you're here. We've got a lot to cover tonight. Let's dive in. Up first, Puppygate with the Beverly Hills Housewives or Housewives of Beverly Hills. I don't know. I don't even watch the show. However, people have written in and wanted to know. I guess how this all went down, and I'm going to play a video, is one of the housewives adopted a dog. The dog was aggressive, bit one of her kids, and then snipped at the other kid, and the kids are young. And then she returned it to where she got it, and then they convinced her to try another dog, and then uh, the whole thing became a mess, and supposedly uh, the second dog didn't work out, so the second dog was then given to a, another family friend who had a dog, and make a long story short, that dog ends up where it all begins. I don't even know. It's not that big of a deal. I don't know why it has to be an unbelievable big giant mess for the housewives. So let's check out what do I have to say about this? All right. Now, I don't know who many of these people are. I know a couple of them. A couple, I, I don't have a clue why they're famous. I don't know. Uh, they're beautiful and gorgeous and dress amazing. Uh, I don't know why they're famous. All right. Dorit sets the record straight. If you Google this, I just put this from, I went into YouTube and just put in puppy gate and it's like crazy. So evidently the housewives believe that Lisa Vanderpump, she owns this whole dog adoption place, which is really amazing. She's making a big difference in the dog's lives. They think she leaked the story to an online rag mag. Okay. So this online rag mag, she denies it and says, no, she didn't. The, there's a lot of problems with this, uh, and then she goes and takes a lie detector, a polygraph, which actually doesn't measure deception, it measures stress, so we'll go explore that in a minute. The, one of the other problems is she's lied before on the show and has been busted, and they show the clip of where she's lying, so, so the housewives already know that she's a liar, and uh, when you are being challenged on something, how many of you say, let's take a polygraph? Let's take a polygraph. Truthful people convey, liars try to convince. So it's a little over the top with, it's the puppy gate. Did you leak the story or not? And I'm gonna tell you my opinion on it. So let's dive into a video with Lisa. Here we go. I have to say three words to you. Yes. Lie detector test. Yeah. This is going to be scored as if it was a serious criminal test using federal guidelines. If she's lying, I'm going to catch it in a second. Why did you deem that necessary to do? Well, because if you're shouting from the rooftop, if somebody says to you, did you do it? You say, no. Did you do it? You say, no. And then you say, no, I didn't. No, no. You know, I swear on my kids' life. Kyle, I swear on my children's life. I mean, for me, I'm a religious woman. Everybody knows. I've supported our church every week with the homeless the last 12 years. Everybody knows that. So for me to hold my children up, you know, and say, I swear my children's life, that should be enough. Uh, to me, if somebody said that, I'd say, okay, that's it. Okay, that's done. So the fact that it's still, oh, we don't believe you. We don't believe you. I'm just like, okay. And then John Sessa said, take a lie detector test. So I said, you know what? Yeah, why not? Why not? I'm not scared. I don't think you'd put yourself forward for a lie detector test if you had a modicum of guilt. And I didn't. So that was it. Your co-stars were already vocal tweeting about it, saying, well, how do we know that the results would be accurate? What is your response to that? Well, then I think, because how do I know the results are accurate? You know, from uh, talk about this guy, but he works with the FBI, works with the police force. So, you know, if I went in, like, in all kind of authenticity say you know i'm going to tell the truth why i'm up or whatever i mean it was pretty strict so you know um it, it was a wonderful experience afterwards when he came back and said yeah a thousand percent you're telling the truth so yeah but you know what it was a little nerve-wracking i have to say because you think well my heart's going so fast am i going to look guilty but you know i knew i was innocent of it and it's a poor accusation anyway with what i've got going on in the world say i'm giving a story trader online actually Frankly, you hardly have time to go to the bathroom. I don't care what they say, because if I invested in what they said, then the last 15 episodes would have destroyed me, because it's been an endless litany of abuse, of accusations. So, you know what? On with the next reunion is coming up. Have you made a decision? Oh, oh, ah. <laughs> yes, Lisa Vanderpump had to run off before we could get into more Real Housewives talk at her first annual World Dog Day celebration in West Hollywood. All right. 
I want you to buy this book. If you are watching me here, my name is Janine Driver. This is Celebrity Lie Detector Live. I go live every Wednesday. And then every week I do little commentaries between 30 seconds and a couple minutes long on different issues and people and celebrities and athletes in the media. Uh, my job and my life's mission is to inspire people to look at their world in a different way. This week, I'm going to highlight this book called Spy the Lie. It's written by some CIA people. I don't know them. I've never met them. Philip Houston, Michael Floyd, and Susan, I'm going to slaughter her name, Carnicio, Carnicerio, Carnicerio. Uh, this, you won't be able to put it down. It's a fascinating book. Yes. I'm going to play a little video here of this man who was not from law enforcement, investigator, wanted to find out, could he beat the polygraph? So he went to a series of people and got some tips. And one of the tips is uh, you want to, in the questions where they, ex they, they already know the answers, your name is Janine, you're wearing a black shirt, you're wearing a necklace, you have big earrings on. Uh, the questions they already know the answers to, you should have a calm baseline there. The chart shouldn't be crazy, going crazy. So. One of the ways to trick it is people will try attacking the shoe. It doesn't work. It measures a different kind of stress. It goes way off the chart. It's just not going to work for you. Uh, if it's a modern person and giving you the test, then notice things like if you bite your tongue or bite your lip in, to induce those stress. The best way to beat the polygraph is, from my research, is you want to, in the, so if I was interviewing Lisa Vanderpump, what would I ask her? I put this little chart together for you guys so we could go over it together. So let's check this out. I mean, four steps. So I call this four, my table keeps moving here, four simple steps to getting Lisa Vanderpump to confess. So step one is going to be here, step two, step three, step four. We're going to look at this like a clock. Uh, down here, it says the number one mistell in lying is shoulder shrugs. We know that because you follow me here on Celebrity Lie Detector Live. My name's Janine Driver. If you don't already follow me, please follow me. Please like this and share this with people on your page. You don't know. There could be one little teeny tip I give that could change someone's life or save their life. So I would go here, step one. Step one is think like a hostage negotiator. I would assign Lisa Vanderpump the traits I wanted her to have. Now, if I were to watch this series, I have a funny feeling that a lot of the housewives are probably calling her a liar. You're lying. You're a liar. How's that working for you? Because when we call people a liar, does it get you to find the truth? Do they then say, all right, you got me. I'm a liar. Let me confess. I have say, do you want to be right or do you want to be effective? If you want to be effective, I'm going to challenge you to think like a hostage negotiator. The hostage negotiator doesn't call you a crazy person or a nutball or a liar. They're going to assign you the traits you want them to have. So step one I would do with Lisa Vanderpump is I would assign her traits I want her to have. Things like this right here. At the end of the day, Lisa, you're the kind of person who does the right thing, right? Now, when you're assigning someone a trait, you can't just say, oh my gosh, you're so kind, you're so nice, you're so friendly, you're so generous. Oh, you're so great. That's not going to work. You have to get them to say yes so you can prime their brain. It's called priming. At the end of the day, you're the kind of person who does the right thing, right, Lisa? She has to say yes. And you believe the truth is important, right? Right? Yes. And you can admit when you made a mistake, right? I mean, you know, we, no one's 100% truthful. Sometimes we stretch the truth. And, and as long as we own it, that's what matters most, right? Are you planning on telling the truth today? You are, right? I would prime, prime her brain right here. Truth, 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 truth. I would not bring up lying here. Step two. After she says yes to the traits from step one, then it's time for the setup. Now, this is where we'd use, and we're going to learn about this tonight with the three stages of decision-making, what's called attending, intending, and committing, or what I call researching, reasoning, and the result. And once we get there, you're going to find out, and I don't know if you saw my TED Talk, how five words can get you what you want, but really I gave three. It's a story for another time. However, I talk about this. The word because is one of the most influential words in the English language, if not the most influential word. So I have a challenge I do with my corporate clients where I have them come up with a statement where they start it with a because and then end with a call to action with the because. Right here, check out my, I'll put a link below for my TED talk. Be Lisa, because we know you believe the truth is important, 
And because we know you want to tell the truth, this week we all spoke to an international expert specializing in finding the truth. She changed the FBI, CIA. This is how I would want to be introduced. Or I would skip this stage and just simply, I would still do the stage because um, you are all about telling the truth. The housewives reached out to me so I could get to the bottom of this and we could repair these relationships if they, if they could be repaired. So whether you tell me the truth or you don't tell me the truth, we know more than you think we know. Remember, focusing on truth, not lies. Instead of saying to your kids or your clients or to your customers, you know, listen, don't lie to me here. Um, say, listen, it's critical that we, you tell me the truth. If you promise to tell me the truth, prime their brain right out of the gate. You're a truthful person, right? I mean, no one's perfect, right? We all make mistakes. It's owning it that takes the courage. That's where true integrity lies, is saying, yes, and I messed up here, right? Next, I would ask a question not asked by the polygraph. I'm going to show you these questions on the other side. At least they were not asked in the video series that Bravo played with regard to the polygraph that Lisa Vanderpump took. Last, if Lisa interrupts me, so if Lisa interrupts you or if your employee interrupts you, this is very aggressive. This is a little bitchy. It works for me. It's, it may work for you. It may not. And here's how it works. Uh, I, instead of me getting aggressive and raising my tone of voice, I'm going to let the person speak first. So I let Lisa Vanderpump speak first, uninterrupted, just let her go, go, go. Now I'm going to start talking. When I begin talking, she interrupts me, I'm going to say this, Lisa, you are embarrassing yourself. Well, first I'm going to say, please don't interrupt. I didn't interrupt you. Please let me say a couple things. But if she interrupts me again, I'm going to say, Lisa, you're, you're embarrassing yourself. Uh, and she may say, I'm not embarrassing myself. You're embarrassing yourself. I'm not embarrassed. I don't know, but with an accent. Uh, what if she doesn't say that? Maybe she'll just stop. When you say to someone, you know what? You're embarrassing yourself right now. Uh, that is the best powerful tool I can give any human being on earth, especially women, to say this. You get to remain calm, in control, and you just simply say, wow, you're really embarrassing yourself right now. Not what you're doing is embarrassing. No, you're saying you're embarrassing yourself. And now they may say, well, I'm not embarrassing myself. You're embarrassing yourself. Here's what you say then. You're right. Not only are you embarrassing yourself now, now I am also embarrassed for you and the way you're behaving right now. So here's the deal. We're going to stop talking about this conversation and we're going to talk about it when you are able to be a better listener. So give it a shot. You're, you're, you know what? You're embarrassing yourself. And now, and she interrupts again. Yeah, now you're embarrassing me. This conversation is now over. A massive power. You're going to pull in the power. All right. Any questions before I move over to the questions I would be asking? So let me go back to Facebook here and see if any questions are coming in because what I want to talk about, and if you're just tuning in, my name's Janine Driver. I'm the celebrity lie detector. I go live on every Wednesday night after 1030. Tonight I started, I think at 1130. I go for about an hour, hour and a half every Wednesday night and teach really cool things about reading, decoding, and influencing human behavior. Uh, if you want more training, one-on-one, -on -one, where you can slow it down and repeat it, you can get that on my online training platform, which is Blue Streak Training, Blue Streak, B-L-U-E, Streak, like a bolt of lightning. A blue streak is something that changes your life right now. So if you're stuck or you don't like the li life you're in, or you think someone's lying to you, or you're not sure if someone's trustworthy or not, you need to get my online training. So check it out, bluestreaktraining.com. So, all right, uh, very effective tactic. You're embarrassing yourself. Oh, I've used it many times, let me tell you. If I were LVP, I would take total credit for leaking that story of your Lisa Vanderpump, even if I didn't leak it. Why would you not take credit for leaking that? I believed her from word one, go, based on the chain of events. The questions I would ask Lisa Vanderpump. All right, here are some of them. Uh, how did Radar get this information? Now, here's the deal. Because they, because Lisa Vanderpump's team put together the very few questions she was asked, it's easy to beat it. I don't know if you followed the, uh, recently saw the Aladdin, the new Aladdin out from Disney World with Will Smith being the genie. At one point, Aladdin says to the genie, genie, my first wish, make me a prince. And the genie goes, ah, uh, that's not really a good question uh, or a good ask, a good wish, because I could just do, poof, and Will Smith's genie puts a prince right on the top of a mountain across the way. 
And he goes, when you say make me a prince, I could make literally a prince. You mean turn me into a prince. So your language matters. I think that that's the perfect example of how you can lie on a polygraph very easily is you make sure there's questions that you can in, uh, answer truthfully. So let's say hypothetically, Lisa Vanderpump um, said to somebody else, uh, oh, it'd be so good if we could leak this, but I probably shouldn't do that because I wouldn't want to be responsible for that. Giving the command for what? For someone in the company to leak it without telling her. So she could say, no, I don't know who leaked the story. No, I have nothing to do with it. I said, you know, it would be a shame if someone leaked this to Radar Online. It'd be very embarrassing. It would be a shame if someone leaked this. So she's not telling you to leak it. She's not kn knowing who's leaking it. It's very easy. So there are a lot of questions that were missed during the polygraph, if you know what I'm saying. So here, what is something you know about, this is what I would ask. Hey, Lisa, what are something you know about how this story may have been given to Radar Online that you've not shared with us? So what's something you've not shared with us? Do you believe it's possible someone who works at Vanderpump Dog Foundation spoke or texted it or emailed? Because if you say spoke, spoke, but they wrote it on a piece of paper or they wrote it in an email. Um, is it possible that someone who works with you there spoke or text mailed or emailed someone else about this issue and then that someone else had a connection to Radar and then they told them the story. I also would stop using the word leaked. That's just like saying lied. It it's, it's, doesn't have good connotations attached to it, right? So I would say, did you accidentally tell this story to someone that may have overheard you? I would give Lisa Vanderpump a way out. I would say one of two things happened here. Either you totally sold us out because you're trying to get another show. It's all about Lisa, Lisa, Lisa. It's all about you. You totally sold us out, made a ton of money from it for, by doing it and hope to get another show. Or you ac it accidentally leaked out someone, you told someone and that someone may have told someone and it may have accidentally leaked out and, and it may be able to be traced back by someone in your company. But it was a total mistake. If that's how it went down, you'll apologize. You know, you'll be the first to apologize because you had nothing to do with it. And if it's connected to you in any way, you'll apologize, right? So I'd give her a way out. The truthful person's going to say, "What? Well, it's neither of those things." Uh, my husband's never smoked marijuana. You notice I'm not saying I've never smoked marijuana. It is legal now. Uh, so very few times have I smoked marijuana. Uh, if you ask my husband, "Did you ever smoke weed or did you ever smoke marijuana?" He's going to say, "No." If you gave them two choices, either you are the drug dealer, you sold it, you grew it, you got everyone else hooked, or you just tried it one time and it wasn't your cup of tea. He's still going to say what? No, it's neither of those because I didn't do it. When someone is lying, if you give them a really terrible answer and then you give them an easy way out where it was a mistake, your husband's cheating on you, you're like, you know what, or you, you know, you've know, you been cheating on me for years. One of two things is happening here, Michael, or Steven, or Jeff, you know, you've been cheating on me for years. Or if it's a one-time thing, you know, it's not even a big deal. You weren't even into it, but you bumped into your ex-girlfriend. You had a couple of drinks. We were fighting. It was really my fault because we, you and I were arguing. We were fighting big time. You were at this bar and she seduced you because that's what she does. That's why, that's why you broke up with her in the first place. It's not your fault. It's never happened before and it'll never happen again. It's not a big deal. And see which story he jumps on. Now, when he jumps on a story, then you can attack and be like, you piece of it, blah, 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 right? All right, down here, uh, next I would say something along the lines, how would you respond and what would you feel? I would divide these into two, but because space was limited, I combine them here into one, but I would have two different questions here. How would you respond and how would you feel if we showed you proof today that Radar got the story indirectly from one of your employees? How would you respond? Then I would ask it again, and how, how would that make you feel if you found out that it, they did get the story from one of your employees or indirectly? If there was one person in your company who had connections to leak the story to someone at Radar, could you guess who that would be? Yes or no? Did you ask that person if they gave any information about Dorit returning the dogs and question it to anyone they know who has a connection at Radar in some way? How did you ask or interview each of your employees regarding the story getting to Radar? When you find how the story was given directly or indirectly to Radar by someone in your camp, what will you do? What will make you, so think about it, a truthful person be like, I'm gonna fire them. They'll be fired right away. 
the liar wants to try to convince us. So it's highly possible Lisa Vanderpump could say here, well, they won't find that because no one from my company leaked it. Really? So now you're a psychic? How do you know that someone in your company, Lisa, didn't then tell a friend or a roommate and then they leaked it to Radar? They're having sex with someone that works at Radar, used to date somebody. Well, you just don't know. So if you're going to get stand by and, and verify for 100% of the people that knew the story and that work in your company, it sounds a little ridiculous. Instead, the answer should be, yes, is it possible? It is possible. Uh, if, if it happened, I am unaware of how it happened, how it went down or who shared the information. When I find out if it did come from my company, I will apologize and that person will be reprimanded, right? So, cause it is possible, it is possible. So Lisa might come in with an absolutely impossible. And then we know again, she's overselling. How did you ask or interview each of your employees? When you find out the story was given, we already did this one. What makes you believe each employee is 100% truthful with you? I'd ask this question and just wait and see what she says. Lisa, have you ever lied to get out of trouble? Which we know she's done on the show several times. And then really, when you ask someone a question, a great follow-up question, if you've read my book, you can't lie to me, you already know this, really. You can ask really. You could even say, why should I believe you? Well, you should believe me because I would never do something like that, really. Really, I would never do anything like that. All right, uh, next, the topic at hand, I would say to Lisa, what would you say if someone told us, someone you work with looked up on the internet how to beat a lie detector or a polygraph and then told you what they discovered? And then of course, other questions similar to this, have you ever watched, Googled, or went to YouTube and looked up how to beat a polygraph? It's crazy. These housewives argue and gossip quite a bit from the little teeny parts I've seen over the last couple of days. And no one said, I'm going to take a lie detector test. I'm going to take a polygraph. It's just way over the top, way over the top. Last but not least down here, get into the topic of truth. When is the last time you were not 100% truthful to someone who trusted you. So now I'm going to, like, I would try to knock her down a couple pegs here because I'm putting her in a catch-22. It's highly likely if I was interviewing Lisa Vanderpump, she would not allow me to ask these questions. She would shut them down. Uh, she would shut this down. When is the last time you weren't 100% truthful with someone you trusted? Millions of people love Lisa Vanderpump, so uh, they may not want to watch my, my segment because I think it's highly likely that she lied and someone in her camp leaked the story. Have you been 100% truthful in this entire issue? Really? Is there any question you think we should be asking you that we didn't ask? Is there something you want to disclose, Lisa? Something else you want to disclose? Do you think because the story was covered by Radar that this would help you professionally in some way? Yes or no? What do you really think? This is a great question. How are you doing? Great. How are you really doing? And the person can burst out crying. It's always an awesome question to ask. And last but not least, do you think one of the other housewives leaked the story to Radar and who? And then I'd explore that. So hopefully this is helpful up here in the circle. Remember, no is the strongest denial. Not, absolutely not. I would never do something like that. Uh, truthful people convey and liars try to convince. All right. I'm going to get out of here. Any questions before I leave? I'm on Facebook, checking out your comments, checking out your comments. Let's see any questions before we wrap this part up and get to the next section. These were good friends of hers. They didn't feel comfortable enough, free to tell Lisa and not all the other nonsense, blah, blah, blah. Anytime she was asked, she was aggressive as hell. Listen, truthful people expect to be believed. And uh, Lisa disappeared for the last several episodes, evidently. And according to an interview the other day, she said she's not coming back to the show. We'll see. It's television. Drama would be to say you're not coming back and then come back. <laughs> I'm Janine Driver. This has been the Celebrity Lie Detector Live every Wednesday night on Facebook. And then I post these on YouTube. Please put your comments below. Make sure you like it. Make sure you follow me. Make sure you share this with everybody that might find this valuable.